Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Alicia and you are watching XO Alicia Marie, the place to be. <laughs> Doing the second round of recording this video. The first one was a little too long and I have to make an effort y'all. I gotta make an effort to just not chatty Cathy it up with you guys. <laughs> I will easily crank out one hour videos. So I've got my notes here to update you guys of what's been going on in my life since I got laid off last year, August, 2022 for the third time during the pandemic or since the pandemic, boo, boo, boo. I know I haven't met anybody else yet that has been laid off as many times as I have. And I watch a lot of these videos. <laughs> I read the comments just to see if there's anybody else who's been laid off three freaking times since the pandemic in their industry or just in general. This is going to be as short as I can be because it's really hard to be short. I just want to chit chat with all y'all. I live with a six year old. So as you know, I only get out once every other weekend and that is this weekend. Mama Palooza starts today at six o'clock when I drop him off to go with his dad for the weekend. Life after layoff. Let's see. I got laid off August, 2022, as you may or may not know from some of my other videos. I live in Austin, Texas. I've been in real estate for 17 and a half years. I've been working for mortgage companies uh, since the pandemic. I've worked for mortgage companies before the pandemic, but as an assistant and a transaction coordinator, I have been primarily in the mortgage side of the business. I still being a single mom, I just feel like it'd be really difficult to, um, unless I put my kid back in after school care, which I, I may be doing that if I can afford it. <laughs> um, or if the industry turns around, sure, I might become a realtor again and at least I'd be able to take people, but I can't take them every weekend. Like that's the thing I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'd have to figure out where to put him if someone wants to go look at a damn house on the weekend. So, which is everybody. I got into the mortgage side of the business because I wanted to be able to have the convenience of working from home. Even though I worked in the office before the pandemic happened or before the national quarantine was announced, uh, I was still close to home. I was still uh, in a good part of Austin. And at any given moment, if anyone's kid got sick, you just take your laptop home. And I already had another monitor here. So I could still work. And even if I traveled somewhere and I wanted to work a little bit so that I don't get behind, I still could have done that. And that was the whole reason for going into the mortgage side of the business. Well, a lot's changed obviously. And so I got laid off August, 2022. I was working in uh, hard money lending, investment lending. I was a mortgage assistant, AKA getting paid to be trained to become a loan originator someday. And um, I just wanted to learn everything about really the company from, from the start before I felt comfortable trying to sell to investors and brokers and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, after I got laid off, I actually worked for two mortgage brokers after that, except I worked for free. The first one was so awful. I thought I was going to be, be able to help him. But when you're an assistant and your boss, basically your boss doesn't call you back in a week and he's not answering your text messages, that is a big no, no. That is very unprofessional. I've been an assistant to a president and a senior VP. And then I've been an assistant other times for not just a team, but for individuals like high powered individuals. And y'all, every time I've been an assistant, I'm treated like their second wife, like literally if they have issues, they need a bitch about something. Even if it's not related to me, you're like their therapist. So I'm used to having a very close, relationship, so to speak, business relationship with people that I'm an assistant for. With that being said, if your assistant calls you, you need to call them back. <laughs> so I had to fire that guy. I had to fire that guy about a month and a half in. I was ready to go. I was pushing paper and I just couldn't get a hold of his borrowers. I needed a couple more documents to get the ball, uh, to get the loans into processing. And I'm like, what, 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 what's up? Like, I, I'm not used to, you know, having to, uh, bother people to give them a mortgage. Like 
people should be motivated to refinance on their own. And so I felt something was wrong. Anyways, I fired him, meaning, yes, I, I told him, I'm not working for you anymore. This is awful. And, you know, unless you're going to pay me a lot more money and you're going to actually pay me an hourly wage or a salary to do the work uh, versus I don't get paid until closing, then, you know, you, you can just do this by yourself. So, um, I had another person become a mortgage broker, same thing. I worked for them for free. <laughs> this time it was two months just to have problem after problem. And it wasn't the customer this time. It was the mortgage broker. Some cats came out of the bag, so to speak. And I had to re release myself from being associated with that person, um, for legal reasons. So. Um, not, not anything bad, but like before I was ever dragged into a legal situation. So, um, borderline mortgage fraud, <clears throat> fired that guy. So basically for about, um, from about August, 2022 to right at the start of January, 2023, I worked for free y'all. I worked for free. I did a lot of stuff, not just data entry, but gathering documents, making phone calls, organizing these documents for the, for the lender. <sighs> I'm not doing that again. Luckily during that time I was building a third Etsy shop, which was my biggest mistake. I really should have just immediately focused on my second Etsy shop, which is planner therapy. Um, because that one started gaining momentum in October when I started seeing consistent sales even though it was a small dollar amount, I was just happy to see that October, November, December, January just kept climbing. And so, um, I'm, I'm still, that, that shop is still viable. And then from time to time, I'm getting an order from bad girl bomb. Um, I'm not doing any marketing with that. I'm just trying to get rid of my inventory and I may make, I may make some more tattoo bomb, but, um, I have enough made right now. So I'm just, you know, whoever orders that I'm just, I'm trying to get through that inventory before I go formulate and melt more tattoo balm. Those two are doing well. I, I don't touch the money though. I really don't. The only money I touch is when I need to buy more supplies for planner therapy. Since I do print some of the planner covers on vellum paper for people when they place an order or they can purchase the digital version. Um, let's see a couple of other things that happened. Oh, <laughs> I almost got evicted. So I had a crazy neighbor move in next to me. December 3rd was the first time I heard her fight with her boyfriend and you don't hear the boyfriend. Okay. You hear her. That's all you hear is her yelling at the top of her lungs, cursing at the top of her lungs inside her apartment, coming through my walls, even outside, even other people have called the police about the couple fighting outside. Okay. Laying long story short, she's gone. They made her move out. Let's just say, uh, on day four of them being here, there were seven police officers, police officer vehicles staked around my apartment. I was told by a detective, it's not safe to be here. Go somewhere and come back. Yeah. With my six year old child, that's what I came home to. And it didn't stop y'all. It got really bad. The leasing office was doing the right things in the beginning until suddenly one day, the assistant manager who was handling everything correctly and very well and very professional to get with corporate to get these people freaking moved out. I've called the police on her for threatening my life. Another, somebody else called the police, but a lot of drunk calls. Like she was belligerently drunk. I read some of the notes and she would be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm drunk, I found my money. 17 police reports. Anyways, and y'all, I don't live in a bad part of town, okay? I live in a really good part of Austin, Texas. Okay. I don't live in the rich neighborhood, but I live in a good part of town that this type of activity and the, the people acting like this should not be happening where I live. Everything was fine until the assistant manager suddenly out of blue was fired, who I thought was the sweetest woman. The property manager takes over. So the property manager, um, I caught her lying. Yeah. There'll be a whole nother video about this in detail once I move out of but basically I caught her lying about something and tried to contact corporate. And suddenly I get an eviction, uh, a notice to vacate on my door. 
and I pretty much used my resources, legal and nonprofit organization resources, which again, I will talk about in another video once I get out of here. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna hear about that because y'all, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that story is gonna be one, at least a good hour, maybe even an hour and a half, but it is one of the craziest, it'll be that, that land, like nightmare landlord situation Anyways, so that finally got fixed. It's just been stress after stress. I know God wants me to move out of here and I will be moving out of here. I just have about four more months to go. Then what happened in March? I miscalculated when my unemployment was gonna run out. Hold on. Anytime there's cherry Coke on fountain, on a fountain, I have to have it. That's my vice. Love me or leave me. I miscalculated when my unemployment was going to run out. <laughs> really, it ran out mid-March. I just didn't know until I got a check at the, you know, the end of March for $75. I was like freaking out. I was like, great. So I started my plan B, which was always to go back and do Lyft and Uber. I'm a five-star Lyft driver and on Uber, I'm 4.91. Don't know why it is so hard to get myself up to five stars. I don't drive a lot. I don't drive full time all day, every day. It's just not feasible, you guys. I have to schedule, I have to basically drive part time so I can spend the other part of my day running errands, cooking food slash meal prepping, creative work. Of course, I've got, you know, my, my Etsy shops and I'm obviously I'm, I've been trying to brainstorm about what am I gonna do with this YouTube channel? And I do, I, I know I have some ideas but it's still gonna be considered a lifestyle channel. So subscribe, subscribe if you like me. <laughs> I have been doing Lyft and Uber, a little bit of DoorDash. I really, you know, it's, y'all, it's 100 degrees in Austin, Texas right now. It is the summer. I have to be, I have to be in a different mindset to do DoorDash, but DoorDash is, is good here. It's good here. The only thing is June is a real slow month. It's taken me a little bit longer to make $100. With Lyft and Uber, I'm used to making like 150 bucks in four to five hours. And that's because I have a seven seater SUV. If I get those airport rides, people that need the larger cars or there's just more people, that can really boost your income. I'm trying to juggle things with fitting everything in. And the thing is, I am doing everything. I feel like I can't pick. Like I really wanna grow this YouTube channel and I know once I release this video, it's going to be floating around to gain momentum. It's gonna take some time. So I know I need to do videos now so that maybe by the end of the year, I would hit a thousand subscribers. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I'd love to hear from you. But also I have a planner shop that's actually making either some, some passive income because I have digital items and then I got to do some of the print. And peak season is about to happen. So I want to, really put more products in my Etsy shop. So anyways, <laughs> I've got to build up more and I'm working on that shop. And then of course I actually have to go and trade my time for money to at least replace my unemployment income and just pull from my savings as least as possible. That is kind of what's going on right now. There's definitely, I've, I've got a few great ideas for videos that are coming up, but you know what? If you have any ideas, comment down below. I definitely wanna talk about money because there's a lot of stuff I've been do revamping with my budget and my spending and some little tricks I'm playing on myself with saving money. <laughs> and I have been, I have been window shopping for a Tesla. Anyways, and before that, I'm gonna have to get my credit score up. So I've already got the ball rolling and worked on that, working on that. And um, if anything, money, self-development, there's a lot of, oh my gosh, there's a lot of mindset stuff that I'm doing behind the scenes, including reading. If anything, you know, getting laid off three times kind of makes you wonder like, I think God wants me to be independent. Like to me, it's a sign, but I'm trying to figure out how to make it work how to make it work without me getting burnt out. I've already had lots of thoughts about, you know what, I'm just gonna stop working and spend all my time to get a job. Lots of times I wanna give up, 
and I would love to not be out driving and putting miles on my SUV and whatnot, but I actually like it. You know, it gets me out of the house and I get to interact with people and not really working from home, literally stuck inside this apartment, which I love my apartment, but you know, I'd be able to do more YouTube because before I got laid off, I was, <laughs> I was doing a lot of stuff in between. I was working on my side hustles on the DL in between work. I haven't really been through a streak of videos in a long time and I kind of feel nervous about getting back on camera and whatnot. So, and I don't know if I'm, you know, the niche thing and, oh, am I supposed to be an official teacher? Like, I just like to talk very down to earth. This is how I talked even with investors and brokers on the phone. I didn't need to be, you know, sounding uber professional because honestly, a lot of the investors and the brokers I dealt with, it was either their first property investing it's their, it's their journey. They were more than happy to talk to somebody else that had experience with the whole, the whole process, which I have. I've been an investor. I just couldn't get my hands on a house to flip. And then I had to deliver a baby, but I went through all of that. I got the LLC. I had a mom handwrite my letters. I went, uh, I walked in and out of uninhabitable houses between San Antonio and Austin. At that time I was a realtor. If there was a house on the MLS, I just walked into the house as long as it was vacant. And I worked with an acquisition company where we would go out to properties and assess, you know, an average cost. Uh, we would literally go room by room and, and I'd look at everything and, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of say, what's it going to be to remodel this room, the kitchen, whatnot, up to the way that I wanted to remodel everything. I've been through the process. So I've done a lot of different things in my life. So let me know if there's anything you want to hear about. There's also the whole entrepreneurial journey that I've had. I've been an Amazon seller twice. That is hard. I've tried to sell on Shopify. It's hard unless you 100% every day want to be cranking out videos and content on social media. And right now I'd rather just be doing that for YouTube, not even my Etsy shop. I'd rather just let that grow organically or maybe by way of some of y'all hearing about my my endeavors. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and let me know down below what you want to hear more of. But anyways, thank you so much for watching.